Hello, this is Dr. Don Michael, your politically incorrect sex counselor, and today I'm going to bring you some interesting information on why sperm count is dwindling and why are some boys being born with smaller penises and girls menstruating earlier. I don't usually quote from the New York Times. I find them to be a little bit... Um, I don't know, political in their nature with their opinion. But if you kind of read through some of the uh, opinion from the writer, what he's quoting is solid evidence that I thought was important to bring to the public. And something that I have been tracking for at least the past 15 years. So there's uh, much validity to this. And I do think that people need to start taking some more precaution with what they're consuming, as well as what products they're using in their house, putting on their body, um, and just be aware of your surroundings and what you consume. So let me get started. I'm going to read from this article and I will post a link below for all those that want to read through it. There's a couple little things I left out. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to read word for word the article. Okay, so sperm counts have been dropping. Infant boys are developing more genital abnormalities. More girls are experiencing early puberty. And adult women appear to be suffering declining egg quality and more miscarriages. It's not just humans. Science report genital anomalies in a range of species, including usually small penises in alligators, otters, and minks. In some areas, significant number of fish, frogs, and turtles have exhibited both male and female organs. Four years ago, a leading scholar of reproductive health Shanna H. Swan calculated that from 1973 to 211, the sperm count of average men in Western countries had fallen by 59%. Now remember, that's back in 2011. Um, we don't even know what's happened now in 2021. Inevitably, there were headlines about Sperma, spermagodon, and the risk that humans would disappear. But then we moved on to chase other shiny objects. Now Swan, an epidemiologist at Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York, has written a book, and it's called Countdown. And that will be published um, coming up in the next week or so. Her, she is sounding the warning bells for this. Her subtitle is Blunt, How Our Modern World is Threatening Sperm Counts, Altering Male and Female Reproductive Development, and Imperiling the Future of the, hermit, of the Human Race. Swan and other experts say the problem is a class of chemicals called endocrine disruptors, which mimic the body's hormones and thus fool our cells. This is a particular problem for fetus as they sexually differentiate early in pregnancy. Endocrine disruptors can wreak havoc on your reproductive system. These endocrine disruptors are everywhere. Plastics, shampoos, cosmetics, cushions, pesticides, canned food, uh, even your ATM receipts. They often aren't on labels and it can be difficult to avoid. Chemical companies are as reckless as tobacco companies were generations ago or as opioid manufacturers were a decade ago. Obviously, we still have an uh, opioid crisis and it looks like they're coming back in from China again. They lobby against even safe testing of endocrine disruptors so that we have little idea if products we use each day are damaging our bodies or our children's. We are all guinea pigs. Aside from the decline in sperm counts, growing number of sperm appear defective. There's a boom in two-headed sperm while others loll aimlessly in circles. 
rather than furiously swimming in pursuit of an egg. An infant who has had greater exposure to a kind of endocrine disruptor called phthalates has smaller penis swan found. And let me tell you what phthalates are. They're a group of chemical used to make plastics more flexible and uh, to harden and break. Hundreds of products such as vinyl flooring, adhesive, detergents, automobile plastics, soap, shampoos, hairspray, nail polish. People are also exposed to phthalates by eating and drinking food that has been in contact with these containers. And I will tell you, since COVID um, and people have been in lockdown, they have been buying a bunch of food from takeout places, and many of them are in these styrofoam boxes, which I hope nobody decides to heat them up in the microwave because all of these will uh, just create toxins in your food. So the best thing to do is to either bring your own glassware in or even a box um, made from cardboard uh, would be better than some of these plastics that they're putting your food in to take home. Okay, uncertainty remains. Um, research sometimes conflicts and biological pathways aren't always clear. There are competing theories about whether the sperm count decline is real and what might cause it, and about why gir girls appear to be reaching puberty earlier. And it's sometimes unclear whether an increase in male genital abnormalities reflects actual rising numbers or just reporting. Um, I believe from what I've heard over the past 15 years that this is a serious problem that people just are not talking about. Still, the Endocrine Society, the Pediatric Endocrine Society, the President's Cancer Panel, and the World Horth Health Organization have all warned about endocrine disruptors, and Europe and Canada have moved to regulate them, but still the United States has not. It's something that Congress needs to get together and work on, um, and the House needs to actually send a bill up to the Senate, and it needs to be approved. So this is something if... Um, you know, you want to bring something up locally or get this started, this is really important that the United States start, start taking this seriously. Patricia Ann Hunt, a reproductive geneticist at Washington State University, has conducted experiments on mice showing that the impact of endocrine disruptors is cumulative, generation after generation. When infant mice were exposed for just a few days to endocrine disrupting chemicals, their tests as adults produced fewer sperm, and this incapacity was transmitted to their offsprings, while finding from animal studies can't necessarily be extended to humans after three generations of this exposure, one-fifth of the male mice were infertile. So what this means basically is we're passing this down to our children and it is affecting them, and they're passing it to their grandchildren, and they're saying if we don't do something about this, we could be very close to becoming infertile. And um, this, is, this is really something that is very scary. Uh, and if people don't do something about it and take control of this, it can have devastating effects. I find this particularly troubling, Professor Hunt told me. From the standpoint of human exposures, you could argue we are hitting the third generation just now. What, if anything, does all this remain for the future of humanity? I don't see humans becoming extinct, but I do see family lines ending for a subset of people who are infertile. Andrea Gore, a professor of neuroendocrinology at the University of Texas at Austin, told, told me, people were impaired, sperm or egg quality cannot exercise their right to choose to have a child. That may not devastate our species, but is certainly devastating to these infertile couples. More research is necessary, and government regulation and corporation responsibilities are crucial to manage risks. But sperm one offers practical suggestions for daily life for those with the resources. So this is important. These are some of the things that you can do. 
Store food in glass containers, not plastic. So get rid of all of your plastic and turn to glass. And if you think back, we didn't have these problems um, before all of these plastics came on board when we used to have, you know, glass containers for everything. Um, above all, don't microwave foods in plastic or with plastic wrap on top. Avoid pesticides. Buy organic products if possible. So that means organic products as far as food, as well as detergents, soap, whatever you can find that is organic, um, buy organic products. Avoid tobacco and marijuana. Use a cotton or linen shower curtain, not one made of vinyl. Don't use air fresheners. Uh, uh, vet consumer products you use with an online guide like that of the environmental working group. I guess it's a group you can look onto. I'm not sure about them, but there are ways to look up your products online and to ask questions and see what's inside of them. And really it's about taking this matter into your own hands and trying to uh, eliminate those products from your house. Another thing too is a lot of people didn't realize when you're decorating your house, using vinyl flooring, um, using anything vinyl to cover seats or like she said, shower curtains, uh, that all has plastics in it. So be aware of um, any vinyl products. The other thing is pesticides. So that's just not on your food. That's if, you know, you're spraying pesticides outside and just be aware of the pesticides. So this is something that um, people should take seriously. As I said, I've been hearing about it for the past 15 years uh, myself and I've known uh, people that are not able to get pregnant, and I've also seen a rise in people that are complaining about smaller genitals and women that are menstruating as early as seven, eight, nine years old, where that was unheard of 20 years ago. So this is something that we all need to be aware of. And I just wanted to bring you this important information today. Uh, as you know, I believe everyone deserves to have a healthy sex life, and so do you.